where we have to stand before him. But in the meantime, he's encouraging us, that's the church all about, he's strengthening us, giving us the wisdom we need. The power, the authority, it's through him and in him, it's in us to meet any challenge, to meet all our needs according to his Christian glory, and give us the peace of God, the motivation to want to live godly and overcoming life. And that's where the peace of God comes in. And I believe the peace of God is here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now let's just wait a moment and just see what the Lord has in store. Just everybody just be still, as the Bible says, and know that I am God. Somebody please obey God. My glory is in this house, and you know, and you feel it. But I say unto you, whereas the glory was in sprinkles, now it's coming in waves upon waves. And as you pray, and as you praise me, the waves come even deeper into your soul. And I will cleanse everything out of you. For I will that you would be <coughs> disciples of me. And know that I am your God and you are my people. So the waves of glory are coming upon you more and more as you Seek me and press in to see my glory. Let's give the Lord a good praise off. Well, maybe some of you don't completely understand. But that's God has given us all different gifts. And that's part of the building up of the body. That's part of what church is all about. And if God puts a message in somebody's heart, that's the minister to each and every one of us. And when she was talking about the waves of glory, man, I don't know if that empowers you or not, but it sure does me. It's, you know, it's kind of like one minute you're down, the next minute you're up. And the wave of glory is that peace. That's the glory of God. You know, many, many times we don't even realize it. But it's the peace of God that passes all understanding that keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's that wave. That's the sort of exciting things about God. You know, what he's, how God's been dealing with me is probably the end of my message. But it's the simplicity about nature. I say this a lot, but I want you to finally catch it. What nature, what God has made, doesn't argue or fight with him. It just does. Exactly what God wants, us to, wants it to do. And it's glorifying. I've never seen a, pre in, a tree in prison stuck in the crack house. I mean, got a messed up mind. Got a gun in one of its leaves. And wait for that, you know what, to come by so they can blow them apart because they got ripped off something he stole one of his buds. You know, another thing about a tree, too. Maybe it doesn't know what it's for. It just does. And all of a sudden, one day, it looks out there and it's got some blossoms. It sure didn't try. It just it just was. It just it was just God being God. The next thing you know. Now, it could have been something like us, some could have been something like some of us. A lemon tree. Somebody waved their hand back there. Well, praise God, we can make lemonade. How many like lemonade? <laughs> We're good, better than orange tree. Now what what am I really saying? It's the wave of God, the peace of God, the God working in nature that God's made everything for a purpose, for a reason, and it just does that if it's, if it's compliant with God. And that's all He wants us to do, is simply be compliant with Him. And some of us have been so hard-headed, no, that's not a good way to say it. Some of us have done our own thing for so long, we can't even tell, we have, can't even tell the difference. We don't even know what to do. Well, just wait upon the Lord. 
He'll show you what to do. And he'll fix everything that's wrong. And that is the truth. Amen? Amen. Turn around and give somebody a big hug. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody get a hug. Everybody, everybody, everybody. The Lord does. He gives us examples. How many believe God gives us examples? We can look at other people. I want to introduce somebody to you that knows how to know. Show us how to know. That. Where? From my mom, Albine. She was a pretty good hugger, too. Oh, she sure was. I think she almost broke my back two or three times. <laughs> Isn't it so much better just to have peace in our life and simply be compliant to God? That's all. So let Him fix the whole thing. Amen? How many need prayer this morning? All right, turn, turn the next one to you and pray for him. Now, you just hugged him? Everybody just pray for somebody. One next to you. Grab their hands or whatever. Just pray for them. Everybody. Said that, and um, let us be defeated. It's my favorite song. I like. And um, Carl, then I got Nan, brothers and sisters, and um, I love Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's why they give me that that new bike for us. And my son, um, he rose. He rose up and come up that grave that day, and uh, Pastor Jim, um, I'll pray for you over there. <laughs> um, your place. Amen. You won't be stuck no more. <laughs> ever. I love you a lot, Jim. You're a good man. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Pastor Wall and my buddies. Robert, Deborah, did a good job playing that, that piano, piano, playing that drum for you guys. Thank you, Robert and Deborah, for that. Pastor Danny, 
this guy, my brother in Christ, Pascal, Doreen, the all people here. Amen. This um, church on the street, like uh, Dream Center. Uh, I look up, up there. Whoa! It is a Dream Center. Yeah. The chair, Lord. I like the chair. Walk. Do you feel the Lord? Yeah, of course. I'm the Lord. Yeah. So there was a liar. Yeah. So, 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 is it my feet right now? Yeah. So, um, the devil is in a feeding. Do you ever that song? The feeding. The fear up there. You're preaching now. <laughs> Now you know what church is all about. You know, you know why now we come together and support, exhort, and encourage, and build up and uplift each other. And I'll tell you what, thank you the glory of God truly in ways is bless our soul. Is that right, Sean? Praise the Lord. How was it out there today, young man? You're Jeffrey. How was it out there getting for us? Wow. This is so powerful. You've been in a mission? I'm at the... Uh, How long you been there? A week. week. Yeah, I'm here in the cross. You don't flesh you. Just keep letting God be God and see what happens. Amen. Dang, what are you up to? I'm going to let my words be few. I'd be surprised. I love walking this cross. The reason I do is because Jesus is walking for me. The cross that he walked. Yeah, I know I'm preaching. The cross that he walked. He carried 2.5 miles. And it weighed over 700 pounds. He had been whipped to where his bones were showing. He carried that cross. People look at Jesus and say, he was weak, the man be me. I don't think so. I really don't think so. And the fact that he gave me the ability to do this is only for his glory. And every person in here, you have a cross that you bear every day. Amen. The question is, how big a cross are you carrying? God bless you. That was good preaching. Oh my man, here comes the ladies. They got the kids cross. The ladies. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Who was it up there? Oh, it was great. It was great. We we brought a, a young lady in right over there raising her hand. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, and God's moving out there. It never, it's, it's just amazing. You know, God's just amazing how he just moves. I'm hooked on this cross. I love to walk it. I love to see people's faces and see the movement of God because you don't even have to say anything. The cross says it all. Yeah. Good for you. And you like to talk. <laughs> how about you, young lady? How old is it out here? It's awesome. Yeah. What's all that mean? It means that uh, the Holy Spirit leads, guides, and ministers. And, you know, even when I'm not sure what, you know, what we're doing, you know, that's the great thing, that I don't have to worry about what we're doing, who we're talking to, what, who we're supposed to, uh, you know, preach to. He leads and he directs. And there are um, there are so many souls out there who just um, that he brought it all to a head when we finally arrived at Cassidy and just you know called me to remember this is where I found you this is where you were so you know that that's the reason why my heart goes out and this is the reason why every single Sunday I intend to carry this. 
Amen. Amen. That's good preaching, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You know, that's kind of preaching, isn't it? She wants a dollar. Who's got a dollar to give her? Has I got a dollar? No, that's fine. That's fine. She, oh, she wants a dollar. Somebody give her a dollar. There's your dollar. Now don't say a word. You asked for it. That's next, next. Come on. Take your dollar. Take your cross. For me, it's a waiting for a new adventure. Any, anytime when I'm carrying cross and waiting for a new, you know, signs for God. For, you know, seeing faces, new faces, and new hope, and hope, and love them. Yeah. Amen. And you're out there all the time, Mark. God bless you. Give the Lord a good praise, Mark. Amen. Who really had a touch this week by doing an outreach? Something really. Come on. <coughs> what happened? Well, we went to the care center day, uh, uh, this week. Um, uh, Josh was with us, and um, and Gregory. And I don't know where Josh is at. We we're supposed to do a praise report, but Gregory has the flu right now, and he has the praise report. Um, but we have a lady there at one of our care centers who. Um, she has a, I believe it's Hutchinson's disease, and it basically deteriorates your whole bone structure. She can't hold herself still, and her jaw moves, and she's just like spasm the whole time. And we and we had prayed for her before, and then we went in um, this week, and um, she was doing it again, but she seemed like she was getting a little bit better. But then um, we started singing and everything, and then she started spasming really bad. And Josh got on his knees and started singing to her and calmed her spirit completely. I mean, I got the chills right because I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit just came in. It filled the room. You just could feel it. It was amazing to me. And she totally calmed down. Her and she was just relaxed. If you guys ever get to come to care center with us, it's just so awesome. It's 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 I love going. It brings it builds me back up again. It, it puts me where I was supposed to be in the first place. I'm just on the other side now. I'm not you know being the nurse, but I'm just being the, uh, uh, the God's working through me to nurse them back to His spirit. Amen. Something like that, right? <laughs> Amen. So anyway, but um, she stayed calm. He stopped singing, and she still was this calm for the whole for our whole ministry for everything. She she was focusing on us and looking at us, and she could hear us, and it was just amazing. It was just yeah. awesome. So um, maybe next week we do the praise report on Wednesday. You know what? She's sitting there just like her husband. She's quiet. Hold on. Josh, bring your wife up. Real quick, bring it. Josh, Adam. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, Josh. You know, Shannon's got it backwards. When you work out, you're supposed to have a flat stomach. And she works all the time, out all the time, and she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, only 35 more days, and well, we'll be here. Hey, we'll be here. You know, so neat is, they were here before, a little, little cantankerous, you know. So God brought them back. In fact, when is your marriage? Is it this week or next week? In seven days. And seven Amen. weeks today, Pastor Fred is going to marry you. Yeah. yeah! And this is the guys who went out at the nursing home yesterday, praying, singing for that lady. What's happening to you guys? I mean, Shanna, you're unbelievable. She used to have a chip on her shoulder. Not on her belly, no. <laughs> no, but this is people. We're dealing with people. We're all people. Here's the, here's the point. How God changes us. <laughs> I was out there at the nursing home. What are you, how about you two? You need to see me hugging each other. You don't need to see me ripping each other's head off. Or... Right up. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I know, I I love her basketball. We, we get along great. She's my best friend. Oh. Oh, I know you better have. you got to have something to say. You always have something to say. Um, I don't know. Just blessed that we get to be here still and that Josh gets to play worship music for you guys. Like, it's his calling, and I know that's what he's supposed to be doing. So I'm just his number one fan, and I'm just glad to be here. 
just things for all the love from everybody. <laughs> now, what, did that, what does this tell you? I mean, we get into Bible analyze all this, but no. Just their life, radiate, show us, right? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself her. That's what he's got. And she's there to support him. That's what Amen. it's all about? Yeah. Through it all, through the, this, you know, the this, this struggles, and they don't get a chance to live together, because they're, they're not married yet, but we'll be long. And who knows even then how this thing's going to work out, but God does. And that's what we need to do, is just let the trees grow, let the people grow, and let's see what happens. Amen? She's got a big bud. <laughs> Pretty soon it's going to stop for her. Let's give the Lord a good praise, love. Let's hear the word of God. All right, we're the last chapter of John, John chapter 21. Everybody likes to turn there. And yes, he's the beautiful story of Jesus completing his restoration of Peter. John chapter 21. Yeah, 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for well, they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. <coughs> then, as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, one hundred and fifty-three. And although they were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Give it a little bit, please, though. Praise God. Well, that's not good. Give it a good one.
my, my way of thinking this God be God, just like trees do what they're supposed to do, so does all the rest of nature. And here are these guys. Listen to this. You can do this too if you want. These guys were professional fishermen. And they fished all night and didn't catch nothing. And they were probably upset and mad, just like we do a lot of things we think we're supposed to do as hard as we can do. And nothing seems to be working. And then they were cleaning their nets. Probably just, well, I gotta work this clean my nets. What a waste of time. But I think if I don't clean my nets, they're gonna disintegrate, you know, so I gotta clean my gotta wash them. It's like a paint machine I had. If you don't take care of a paint machine, you really in trouble. I don't know if paint spirit, I was a painter. Anyway, you know, Jesus comes along and he says, okay, you guys have been doing it your way all night. What's he saying? Simply, cast the net on the right side of the boat. And you'll find some. Are we going to listen to God? Are we going to listen to our own understanding, our own mind, our own strength, our own power? Listen to me. And just let him make us prosper like he's got everything else prospering. The only difference is, they do what he says. Now, we can try and have tried. It hasn't worked. How many don't talk about it? Come on with this stuff, God to God. Amen. Amen. And one of the deepest things, and I just cannot believe this. You trust His Word, and it comes. It's real. For an example, if He wants us, He tells us to give, give and see what happens. Pastor Danny? <laughs> Before He dies out, good morning, everyone. Um, can we have the ushers come up and the praise and worship team, please, and while they're coming up? I'd like to tell you, just first of all, anybody that's here for the first time, raise your hand, please, if you're here for the first time. I just want to welcome you. For those of you that are next to you, welcome you, because this is a very special place. And I hope that you feel the love and the power of the Holy Spirit that's here. And another thing I want to say is, I want to thank everyone that, that brings their tithes and their obedience to this ministry because it really does a lot of good. And every penny that goes out, it goes right back into ministry. In whatever manner or fashion that we use it in or Pastor Wall uses it in, it, it really works. And, and, it, and, this, and, this, and we're just here just pouring out our love and giving back. You know? So for those of you that give your tithes, excuse me, thank you. Thank you, from Pastor Claude, Ms. Louise, and everyone else that's a pastor and staff here. And those of you bringing your offerings, trust in the Lord. And like Pastor Well said, see what happens. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we just thank you for this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together, Lord, and being in fellowship and unity. Praise and worship in you, Father God. I pray that you bless the word as it goes out. May it touch that one struggling today, Lord, and touch their hearts to the point that they're going to feel through your presence and know your love once and for all and never turn back from it, Father God. Lord, I just thank you this morning, Lord, for all the battles and hardships and, and struggles that people go through, and myself included, Lord. You're here to give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. So we thank you this morning. Bless the offering, Lord, as it goes on in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gonna lift our voice in victory.